Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the offices of C. and Lee with Council Member Jean Kwan. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you How for you? joining us today. First of all, the press conference today at one o'clock with you and the mayor on the Oscar Grant issue. How did it go and your thoughts? You know, the whole world of media was there today. So, you know, Oakland has watched right now and that's unfortunate. I think it's being watched because people are expecting or maybe even hoping for violence. And, you know, this is a very tough time for Oaklanders. I've been doing a lot of door-to-door -door walking, talking to a lot of young people. Um, this whole incident makes the whole city sad. Uh, not just the African-American community, but particularly the African-American community, because I think Oscar is a symbol of a young black man who was working, who's trying to get his life together, and was celebrating New Year's, and now he's dead. And um, yesterday, my neighbors in the Diamond District gathered together, because we gathered together on the first of every month to hope for peace in the world. We started with the Iraq War, but we've taken on local issues, and we wanted particularly to support uh, Oscar Grant's family um, during these next tough few days. And I think we wanted also to tell the world that we knew this young man too, that this is just not a, a symbol, but this is a real live human being, a very sweet person of what I remember, a very nice young man, um, sort of what every mom would want, someone who's working hard, trying to learn new things. And um, I think it really uh, hurt a lot of us individually. And, I, and what I hear and see from young people is that he's a symbol to them too, that, um, they want justice for him because he's a symbol of their own prospects and their own hopes. And too often, particularly in cities like Oakland, where the unemployment rate for young men of color is twice the national average, where one out of five can't find a job, it's hard sometimes to find hope. And I think that a lot of the young people in the city identify with Oscar. And I think it's an opportunity. What I loved about today is we had young leaders from high schools and we had young leaders from Laney. And one of the first youth leaders said that violence is not justice and that to have justice, we really had to work and work for all the young people in Oakland. And I, I think that's a message. I think it's a time, hopefully we'll have a few days of the holiday weekend for us to get together our families and our 4th of July barbecues and our gathering at church on Sunday to talk about what's happening to young people in the city and how we can make sure that there aren't other um, incidents like this that is both how we're going to build different kind of relationships with the police and on the other hand how we're going to make sure that um, the image of young men in the city is changed too that people aren't fearful when they see a young black man or a young southeast asian man or a young latino man in a certain dress walking down the street but that that we uh put our arms around all of our young people do you think that the media including myself overblow the issue or the possibility that there would be a riot you almost get sort of expectation and excitement around it um yeah I had Morbidly to, so. I had to I tell several reporters over the last few days that I was there um, for both of the demonstrations. And at both the demonstrations, thousands and thousands of Oaklanders were there and less than a few percentage of people were involved in it. And I know some people are saying, oh, well, it wasn't just outsiders. Well, the people who were arrested, three quarters of them were not from Oakland. And yes, there were some young Oakland youth who got involved. But um, I was particularly struck by the second demonstration. I had been with the demonstration from the courthouse. We, we stayed with it to the very end. There were like 30 people left on a corner when my daughter and I decided to go have dinner. And what we found out is that about 10 minutes after we left, the police left. And as the police were leaving, that small group broke the bus stop and then attacked the bank window right, I remember and that. that's all anybody that's, all saw, saw of that demonstration and that you didn't see any of the speakers the family at the courthouse you didn't see the hours and hours of, of, of peaceful protests you saw the last minute of this demonstration with the literally the last group of protesters and it just gives this image of the city that um, that's really not true. Oakland is one of the most diverse. And yeah, we may be pretty edgy and we're in each other's face 
faces, but for the most part, we're a pretty tolerant city, and we do have a lot of tough discourse. And fun, too. Look at the World Cup. Well, yes, we're having a lot of fun with the World Cup. We had a lot right, so of fun with, with Oklavia last week with yeah. people on their yeah. bikes. You know, we have more festivals and street fairs than I think any Bay Area city. And they're generally all a great pleasure. So this is a city that knows how to get along. So yes, I, it hurts me when all I see again and again is those last few seconds of a very small group of people who um, attacked one of the banks near city center after everybody else had gone home. I gotta ask you this question before we switch to the mayor's race. Who do you want to win? Who you who do you want to win the World Cup? Your favorite. <laughs> well, we are in Latin America. We're actually pretty fond of Brazil, so we'll they're see. out. They just got I'm, kicked oh, out. No, they just got kicked out. Yeah. Well, you know, my, the Netherlands booted them. My husband. No, I'm sorry. My son's Novia is a Peruvian, and so oh. we watch a lot of the South American teams. So we had actually hoped that. Uh, Brazil would make it, so too bad. <laughs> How's the mayor's race going? You know, as you know, I've been really been beat up the last week, and we're actually thinking. I've noticed, yeah, we, that we're actually doing pretty well. Um, I think That's there's a reason popular, right? I'm being beaten up. I think it's because <laughs> <I'm ahead. laughs> and right. we had about between the robocall and the two mailers, we had about I would say 400 phone calls and about maybe a little less emails and we called everybody back that's the great thing about technology we called everybody who didn't have ID blockage back and tried to explain what happened and tried to get their emails and their addresses so we could mail them a full explanation and we returned every email and Again, you don't know because some people don't respond to you. Right. But other people who responded, we must have gotten at least 100 responses. I would guess it's like 95% say, thank you for this information. It's, it gives a different light of what's happening. Now, for my viewers who may not know, because in this world of media, the robocall issue kind of gets compartmentalized. Tell my viewers what happened to them. Okay. Well, I'm, you know, we have been negotiating with the police for a while. Because there's no way that we can balance the Oakland budget um, if the Oakland Police Department doesn't contribute something to their pension. They have one of the richest pensions in the state. Almost every other city, um, the police officers give something to their pension fund. Oakland's one of the few that doesn't. And because we've been so hard hit by the economy and we've had to cut $70 million this year after cutting $140 million over the last few years, we literally cannot balance the budget when the police and fire are now 75% of the budget unless the police and fire also take some cut. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to us the fairest way would be to have the police department start paying into their pension fund because an Oakland officer can retire at age 50 with 100% of pay. In fact, if they work longer, I've known a few officers in the last few months who have retired at more than 100% of pay and that's why they retired because it actually in their minds was costing them money to work when they could get 115% of pay instead of 100% of pay, um, which is what they're earning. Um, then it was cheaper or, or, or how should I say, more advantageous to them not to work and to retire. They were getting more money retired than working. And um, I think most Oaklanders didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. And what I think we really hated about it is both the robocall and then later the mailers. Now the rebel call was from the Oakland Police Officers. And it wasn't legal, was it? It was not a legal call. Uh, you know, in the state of California, because this is what the Express says, anyhow. Huh? The right. Express got reported that mm -hmm. the call was made from California. In the state of California, on these automated calls, you're actually supposed to be asked permission before they can play. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of interesting. This is the police department. They made an illegal or a police union and they made an illegal call. Then we got two mailers from the California it puts Prison Guards Union, awful position. which is very interesting because what interest does the California Prison Guards Union have in an Oakland race? Well, I hope that they're just not hoping that they continue to get customers, um, basically. Uh, right now in Jerry Brown's stump speech, he talks about how when he was governor first time, prisons made up 3% of the budget. They now make up 11, 12% of the state budget sure. and our universities um, now get less money than the prisons do. And so that's 
sort of a picture of our priorities today as a state and it's absolutely crazy. We should be investing in education and not in jails. So the two mailers um, were both factually wrong. They talked about us laying off 200 police officers. Nobody ever proposed laying off 200 officers and they had the wrong date. Um, they asked people to call for a meeting last Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday, and quite frankly, it had been the week before. And then, you know, it was interesting. It picked different people to beat up on, but particularly the last mailing only had people, just like the police officers union phone call, only had people call me and um, as the chair of the finance committee. And I'm, I won't hide the fact that I've been one of a group of people who believe that we had to have a fair and balanced um, budget. And, you know, what I particularly really disliked about the attacks is one, it pitted so-called non-essential services. Well, mm -hmm. the rest of the budget is mostly parks and libraries and right. senior centers, etc. And I frankly don't think those are non-essential. In fact, in doing our work and the fact that crime has come down 40% in the last three years, I think it's a combination of not just having police officers in general, but having police officers that are geographically assigned to neighborhoods that have some responsibility for neighborhoods as in the major Y proposal. And then secondly, having youth and violence prevention programs that are working with the kids who are most in trouble. Right now, major Y programs work with every kid coming out of juvenile hall before they get back in the school. And with the 200 kids referred to us by the school district as being the kids who are most in trouble. So we're really focusing on the kids who are most in trouble. And I think it's that combination that has brought down crime. Um, we had a very moving meeting about a month ago in public safety where two mothers came in front of us. One was a mother whose child had been shot, and at Highland Hospital, the gang intervention team came in and worked with her and worked in her family. And what she said, by working with her family, we stopped the cousins and the brothers and the relatives are going out and causing another mother to have hmm. to suffer the way she was suffering to have her child shot and in the hospital. Hmm. And then a second mother came from another case, came up and said that her son had been a shooter, but that the police had come and with the gang prevention groups with Major Y and had convinced and helped the family turn the young man in and also had calmed down the family members on that side. And those are the kinds of very, um, very precise things that we can do with kids who are in trouble to give them options out other than violence. I gotta ask you a question regarding the budget. Are you satisfied with the process and the decision, is there anything that you would like to change if you had to, if you were able to wave your magic wand? I mean, other than giving us more money, I'm, I, I, you'd have to be a little bit more specific with that question. The layoff of 80 officers. And well, also, I think, the rancor that was communicated in the media of a, a certain dislike for police officers, not among the council, but among some of the speakers in City Hall. Well, I think we have a divided town. Um, the, the Chief's poll shows that 40% of the citizens of Oakland distrust the police. Mm -hmm. For good or legitimate reasons, we don't know. It's a combination. Clearly, I mean, the city is still under a uh, court order because of the Riders case. Right. Clearly not enough of the Oakland police force lives in Oakland. 90% of the police force lives outside the city. We don't have enough minority police officers. We don't have enough who live in the city. And I think it would make a huge difference if more of the officers live in the city, uh, their understanding about the city. I, the night of the council meeting, I had to ask the president of the police uh, union is whether or not in his town, whether he thought after-school programs or libraries or senior centers were non-essential programs, because basically <laughs> that's what I was being attacked with, because, right. I, because we made cuts in those programs, right. but we weren't going to totally eliminate them, um, because you can't have a city that's just 100% police and fire. You have to have other services in a city. And so if you're talking about the 80 officers, let's be clear. Um, there are people who want to lay off many more officers. One of my colleagues voted against budget because she thought we should have laid more officers off. Um, 
one person was clear that he didn't want to let anyone off but didn't provide an alternative budget and the third person i still haven't figured out why she voted against it but you know the, the reality is that if the police and we are in negotiations and we're, we're continuing to negotiate how are they going if the police my understanding is they're going and, and that's important because they had stopped during all of this sort of mm-hmm. media blitz right um san francisco the let one of the letters that was allegedly sent by the the san francisco police but actually came from the prison guards union fund mm-hmm. um basically said that they were worried well if they were so worried they should i think advise the oakland police to do what they've done the the san francisco police union has now gone two tier um and they're putting nine percent into their pension fund and um Sam, and they also retired age 55, not 50. Mm-hmm. So um, if that was good for San Francisco, maybe it's good for Oakland too. So you advocate that? You're saying maybe. Would you, would you advocate that for Oakland? We're asking them to pay a fair share. And yes, I think probably the current pension fund where everybody retires at 50 is not sustainable. i got to ask you because former State Senator Don Parra has been quite vocal about this issue. And he's made some comments about the budget and... What are your thoughts about what he's been saying? Don's not come up with any budget, and most of the proposals he's come up with haven't been ones that make a lot of sense to me. So, you know, if Don wants to present a full city budget, then he should. Uh, Last year, when we were trying to balance the budget, he was trying to convince the council that the police didn't have to give 10% like everybody else. You know, they only had to give 5%. Well, we stood our ground and the police gave 10 percent now he's basically saying that the police officers don't have to pay more in their pension well you know if he gets to be mayor of the city he's going to have to balance the budget too and i want him to show me how he's going to balance the budget if the police don't start paying something into their pension so it's one thing to stand off on the sideline and call me out size, don right? it's another thing to present a budget i mean we came forward with a budget for good or bad, and people can criticize, but the reality is in this budget, if the police will pay their share of their pension, which is 9% of a 29 cents on the dollar that we put aside for the police pension. I mean, everybody in town, wouldn't you like to be able to retire at age 50 with a $100,000 annuity? Two years off. Right, and I want you to think about what it would cost. I asked one of our stockbrokers what it would cost for someone in their 40s, because that was about the average age of police when this was agreed to before I was elected, what it would cost for a 40-year-old to have an annuity of 100000 a year at age 50. And he said, you probably have to have a couple million, $2 million in the bank. Well, you know, that would be more money than the police make in total. Um, in that 10-year period. So if you can't do it as an individual, how are we going to do it as a city um, in bad economic times? And if we were to do it, what who would pay for that? You know, the average household in Oakland is around 50000 mm-hmm. You know, uh, half as much as what the average police officer makes. Um, these pensions seem really out of line to most people when you talk to them. There was a thought that, well, I'll rephrase this. In the media, there's been more of a coverage of young African-American violence against Asians. How, what do you think about what's happened? Is it overblown? And also, how has it affected your campaign? Because you would be the first Asian-American woman to run Oakland if you were to win. You know, I'm from Oakland. I've had a lot of African-American friends for a long time. I was president of the school board. Half of the children in the Oakland school are African-American children. Um, at that time, now it's probably a little bit more Latino. Um, I have been taking the lead of Mrs. Yi in this. She is an amazing woman. And you know, if you could hear what she said in Chinese the first day, the minutes, hours after her husband died she basically said to us as a city that she wanted us to make sure that this didn't happen to any other family and that she particularly wanted us to reach out to our young people and to give our young people more opportunity 
That's literally what she said in Chinese. And uh, she's an amazing woman. And she's somebody like many of our, one of my husband's friends, African-American co-worker at his clinic, had a brother who was just killed. And my husband was asking him, what could we do? And he said, help the young people in our city. We've got to, the way we, we break the cycle of violence is with justice. And part of justice is giving young people in the city hope, whatever color. You know, I see Asian kids involved in census murders, um, Southeast Asian kids. I see Latinos. I see too many African Americans, a much higher percentage of African Americans. I don't quite understand why that is, but it's in the city for the population, the highest percentage is still in um, the African American community. But quite frankly it touches all of our communities and um, we are a city that has amazing resources and I think we can take the Oscar Grant situation we can take Mrs. Yee's situation and I think we can make it something uh, that is a conversation that brings us together you know I know you look at me and I'm sort of this middle-aged Asian-American woman, but you know, I've been involved in uh, Oakland politics since I tutored people in West Oakland as a college student and for the years as a school board member, there's not a neighborhood that I haven't been in and haven't worked in and you know, I don't see... I see it almost more, I'm almost going to be more proud that I'll be the first woman mayor. Being Asian American mayor is certainly, for my community, is something they're very proud of because a lot of people don't see Asian American elected officials on the street. I right. was struck last Sunday when I was in the gay pride parade. You know, a lot of people, Oakland, okay, they wave, but when I would go by Asian groups, a lot of young Asian gay people were screaming out my name, and I realized they weren't even Oaklanders, but there are so few right. Asian leaders that sort of reach out to the There's gay a hunger, community. It seems. Right? Yeah, and, and yes, and so I was pretty blunt, amazed. You know? I was mobbed by these Asian kids at the end and they weren't from Oakland, you know, but they were from San Francisco and they knew my name. And, you know, um, I'm hoping that when I win that it will be a victory for um, mothers across the city uh, as well as Asian Americans and women and just for grassroots uh, politics and organizing. I got two questions in the roughly four minutes we've got first of all for my viewers why do you want to be mayor of Oakland I want to be mayor of Oakland because I really love the city and because um, I know that we are really in a position now to lead not just the Bay Area, but in the world in many ways. We're one of the greenest cities in the country. We're the face of the future of the, of the country. We um, are a real city. We have poor people, rich people, working class people. You know, we're not a tourist center. We are really what America is going to become, a, a multicultural diversity uh, with lots of uh, talents and culture and arts and lots of problems too, and we're gonna solve them together as a community. Um, so, I believe the city wants somebody who's hands-on, who knows the city, who's not using being there as a jumping off spot or jumping on spot onto something different. That uh, somebody who's gonna work with the community, that's what I hear. You know, I've had about 130 house parties, we've walked, 60, 70 precincts, you know, we've literally talked to thousands and thousands of people. And what they say is they want um, a city that works for all of us. Uh, they want a city hall that will work with neighbors. And I really see my campaigns become a campaign of neighborhood leaders. You know, if you look at who's supporting me, it's neighborhood leaders throughout the city, not just one part of the city, but really throughout the city. And they want to take back the city, basically. You sort of, and our slogans take back Oakland block by block. You know, they want to organize whether it's around a school or around safety or around a community garden. You know, they're ready to step up because we're going to go through tough times. But this is such a great city that you know we're not giving it up to anyone. You know, we're going to uh, continue to move ahead. And what kind of mayor's office do you have? I asked that of all the candidates. In other words, staff type size. Um... Will it be a big office? Like, for example, when I worked for Ellie, we had 27 staffers. You know, that when Jerry pared that down, he relied on city administration. And Ron had 24 at one point. Right. I, I probably, my staff would be probably much smaller. I figure I really need to work 
closely with the cabinet. Mm -hmm. I don't need to have a shadow for each division. On the other hand, I plan to have people who um, are really working on partnerships. So I plan to have probably like a, a vice mayor for, for youth and school services and um, I plan to expand on our, our neighborhood organizing and making sure that our neighborhood service coordinators and our staff work on sort of a beat by beat basis with neighborhoods and on their priorities. So I, I plan to have, um, and then I plan to, to probably have one or two people um, who are working on um, both our image and our economic development, right? Because if we can get more jobs into the city, that will be the solution to a lot of things. So schools, jobs, um, close liaison with the community organizing, which to me is the, the liaison with public safety. So probably a few more organizers um, and, and a much more closer working with our current cabinet leaders, um, you know, although they may not be the same people. But you know, I, I don't think we can afford a big mayor's office or a big bureaucracy. I think everybody has to be, be working in concert. Oh, and one other question, or I'll get deemed. The sports and the Raiders, particularly the, the Oakland A Stadium issue, your position on that? Well, I've been very supportive of the efforts the mayor has made. You know, I think the Jack London spot's the best spot, probably in the Bay Area for almost anything. You know, you have a ferry, a, a train station, two BART stations. You're off a major freeway exit and uh, very close to a lot of BART ter uh, um, bus terminals. So it is one of the best transportation sites. And it would help Jack London and it would build our beautiful cultural area down there with the lake and Chinatown nearby. It could be the really primary entertainment destination for the entire Bay Area with all of those wonderful resources. And finally, are you concerned that the Warriors might move to San Francisco if a new owner takes, takes reins? You know, uh, probably the way, as you remind me, we're probably going to have to have someone just follow this work. But, you know, um, our, probably our bigger problem is the Raiders deal, the original Raiders deal. Mm -hmm. um, the Raiders could leave us and we'll still be paying for their stadium for 2025. I'm yeah, actually, that's the master pretty, lease agreement. I know it by heart. I'm pretty worried about that. You know, um, you know, literally the county. Where are the Raiders going to go? Well, they, say, they sound like they want to go to Santa Clara. We'll see. Um, right. But... You know, we'll be paying for the Raiders deal till 2025 and it costs us $12 million a year. $12 million is what I pay for my entire Parks and Rec department right now. So basically, you would not resist the temptation to sue a city like Santa Clara if they started tampering with the Raiders. I got I, I I to put that out there. I think it's a little too preliminary for that, but trust me, we'll be looking at all our options because the, the Raiders deal costs the city a huge amount it of money. It sure does. And the county too. My husband used to be medical director at Highland, so every time I think about that $12 million a year, what the Highland Hospital could do with it or what I could do with it for kids and after-school programs at $12 million a year, um, also that's a real, um, a real tragedy. Council Member, you have two websites. As council, your website is? I have a great newsletter that's on my council mm -hmm. website. It is. I, I at, tested at it. At org, and in most weeks we have more inches about Oakland than the Tribune. And then now I have my city mayor website, which is uh, Jean Kwan for Oakland. And uh, it is now featuring a is great... Is that .org or .com? Uh, .org. Okay. And it is now featuring a great video that my daughter did about our struggle to revitalize the Diamond District. Mm -hmm. And a Diamond, the Diamond used to be the home of the Hillcrest Motel, right, I saw which, that. which was a place where um, some of my students had been kidnapped and raped and forced into child prostitution. Oh. And it was, you know, it was my first target as a city council member. And um, taking the motel down and turning around the district. Um, is an example of what we can do in Oakland because that was the fourth worst crime spot in Oakland and now it's one of the most thriving commercial districts in the city. Councilor, thank you so much. Thank you Thanks. very much. Yeah.